yeah hello students so please type in the chat box is the audio and video fine so please confirm the audio and video hi gopi good evening all of you so please confirm the audio and video once yeah hi lavi welcome back fine okay great so let us uh, it's all good right okay yeah good great evening so today we'll again continue with this series of engineering mathematics okay and we will basically we, we have started linear algebra and today is lecture number 6 of linear algebra we have finished five lectures so far so in the last five lectures we are right from the definition of starting what is a matrix so we have come across a few things and in last class we have solved about system of equations okay so we have seen when a system can have an equation uh, basically when a given system of equations linear equations of course linear algebraic equations is what we are seeing so when a given linear system can have a solution or if it has whether it has a unique solution or in, uh, infinitely many solutions or in general if uh, it cannot have a solution or basically the system is inconsistent so we have talked about all this points actually okay so this are the basically telegram codes telegram channel uh, codes of course so this is for a gatewala english so any update on this channel will be posted on this gatewala plat uh, uh, telegram channel actually and this uh, vinay sir pw is basically my personal uh, guidance channel so you can join these two channels so that any update on this channel will turn up here and if you would like to seek any guidance from me or any of our teammates you can just come up here okay and please install this unity pw okay so just have an account in this so that you can actually track all your data okay at one particular place and now if you want to uh, save your data in this then ultimately in when you are typing doubt please use this uh, statement like exclamation doubt before you start your doubt actually and then you can go for this hash note uh, i mean this exclamation note and then you can uh, write the notes so that these two will be tagged in your unity uh, location okay exam motor world yeah why not yeah fast track fluid mechanics i remember you good okay so review of the last lecture so basically in the last lecture we were talking about system of equations okay so system of equations actually and in the system of equations we have tested for consistency and also we have tested for uniqueness of a solution uniqueness of a solution actually okay so we have seen these are the two things that we have here clear so system of equations uh, consistency and also uniqueness of a solution and then after we have uh, seen basically a brief introduction about eigen values okay so i have given you how to calculate the eigen values so we came up that the vectors of a particular matrix which do not change the direction actually okay and this is written as a minus lambda i operating on x is equal to 0 and we have seen for this system to have a non trivial solution which means if this system has to has a solution where x not equal to nl then ultimately this implies determinant of a minus lambda i this coefficient determinant should be zero of course okay so that's why we'll get a characteristic equation in order to calculate this eigen values so this equation is characteristic equation of a matrix characteristic equation of a matrix actually here okay so in last class we have stopped at this particular point and now we'll continue from this point in today's lecture and before going for today's lecture so today in in today's class basically we'll be talking up on these things eigen values and eigen vectors in a broader sense and also we'll start looking at some iterative methods okay like lu decomposition or svd singular value decomposition which is in data science of course so we'll see certain techniques in order to solve this system of equations because in yesterday's class all we did is about testing of the equations okay whether the given system has got a solution or not this is the main point of interest in today's class once we uh, go to eigen values and eigen vectors in a detailed way then we'll slowly uh, skid into the solving of the system actually clear these are the things that we are going to cover in today's class and i have given you homework actually okay in three classes i have given you home, uh, three questions i have given you as homework so the first question come on so are we trying to solve pyqs yeah all these are pyqs whatever i am solving each and every question in this batch is a pyq and to be frank as i have told you in this batch i am solving only easy to moderate level pyqs so that i don't want to uh, create uh, you know fear in new starters okay so anyway let's solve this so if some of you have solved this question please enter the answer consider vector p in 2d space let its direction counter clockwise with positive x axis is theta let p be an eigen vector 
of a two-way two matrix with corresponding eigenvalue lambda. Lambda is positive. If we denote the magnitude of a vector by this symbol, then identify the value statement regarding p dash, where p dash is equal to a p, of course. Come on, solve this. Done. Okay. So clearly, in last class, I have given you introduction to eigenvectors, of course. So when I have given introduction to eigenvectors, I have told you. This is Oizen, then x and y, of course. Now, here they told you p is a 2D vector in space. Okay, so p is a 2D vector. If p is a 2D vector, let's say this is my p, for example. Okay, so that's my p, for example. So this is p, of course. Okay, if that's my vector p, then let its direction be at an angle theta with positive x axis in counterclockwise sense. Okay, so this means this angle here in counterclockwise sense is theta. That's what they've told. Correct? Now, a matrix with corresponding eigenvalue lambda, P be an eigenvector of a 2 by 2 matrix with corresponding eigenvalue lambda. So, P is an eigenvector, eigenvector with corresponding eigenvalue lambda, with respective eigenvalue lambda. Eigenvalue with respective eigenvalue is lambda. Okay? So, if you are telling this, this tells you your a times p is nothing but lambda times p of course. Okay, this a p is equal to lambda p and clearly they are asking you identify the valid statement regarding p dash where p dash is a p. Okay, so which means this vector what are you getting ultimately if you multiply matrix to a vector you will get a vector. So, this is your p dash. This is equal to lambda p of course. Okay, now if p dash is equal to lambda p then ultimately this is nothing but some scalar multiplication of a vector and this scalar multiplication of a vector is another vector. So if you talk about this thing, then you can find these two or better about p dash, p dash is in the direction of p, is in the direction of p of course correct you know this is in the direction of p because both these vectors are pointing towards this p and if you calculate the magnitude then ultimately if you calculate this magnitude this is going to be lambda times magnitude of this p okay that's what you'll get correct because if you multiply a scalar a to any vector like you all know if you have a vector ax plus or uh, ai plus bj now if i say you i multiply a constant k to this vector then magnitude of this vector is nothing but k times root of a square plus b square, correct? This is what you will have. So ultimately, the vector will get multiplied with this lambda. So basically, whenever it's an eigenvalue, it only changes its length depending on this lambda and the direction will be same. If lambda is more than one, the vector p dash would be more than this. If lambda is less than one, then it would be somewhere maybe up to this point. That's it, okay? But the thing is length changes, but not the direction. So clearly, option b, which is here, is the correct answer. Yes, a simple understanding of eigenvector. Basically, many years, this was some 2019 or uh, 20, uh, P, I think 2021, I think, okay, in mechanical, it, it, it came. And looking at this vectors theta and reading this question, many people have actually left this question, okay, thinking that it's a very time uh, taking question and it's a very lengthy question. But if you know the concept of eigenvectors, it takes all you uh, 30 seconds to answer this. Yes, clear? Is this question clear to all of you? Patik, Prakasam, Sagnika, Vasista, Exo. Kids Gaming, every one of you, Gopi Krishnan, everyone. So please type in the chat box, is this clear to all of you? Okay, so simple explanation, right? If this is eigenvector, then ultimately direction remains same with change in length. That's the point which I've been telling since the beginning of eigenvectors. Okay, so option B is the correct answer. Anyway, we have concrete poll. So 100%, nice, Sagnika, okay, good, yeah. Chalo. Let's go to the next question, okay? I've given you one more question. So let's see the value of x for which the matrix has zero as an eigenvalue is dash. Okay. So anyway, you would have tried this question, but before going to this question, I'll give you some more uh, things actually. Okay. So let's see in eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. This question we'll solve later, a bit, a moment later. Now this question, let P is 3, 1, 1, 3, it's a symmetric matrix. Considering S is the set of all vectors x comma y such that a square plus b square is equal to 1 where a b is equal to p times of x comma y 
then yes is means this set consists of vectors which lie on one of these curves okay so if you have solved this question please enter the answer it's a nice question actually 2016 isc bangalore 2016 come on quick this is a nice question actually okay very good question beautiful question come on guys fast c is the answer in lips with major axis along 1 1 maybe it could be possible b is the answer okay maybe it's possible cycle of radius 1 by root 10 chalo let's see what we have it's a very beautiful question it was asked in 2016 okay iisc bangalore organized gate examination that year so let's see p is this matrix 3 1 1 3 okay and yes is set of all vectors x y such that a square plus b square is equal to 1 so what does this a square plus b square equal to 1 tells you look what is a of course a comma b is equal to p times x y of course okay so what is p you have 3 1 1 3 3 x y of course okay so if you simplify a b is equal to 3x plus y x plus 3y this is what we have now this x and y should satisfy this condition okay so what does that mean a is equal to this and b equal to this this imply since a square plus b square is equal to 1 this gives you a is nothing but 3x plus y whole square plus x plus 3y whole square is equal to 1 this is what we have okay means yes is actually set of all those vectors where x and y satisfies this equation okay so if you take this equation what does this equation actually represents that's the main question yes or no correct to they are asking you what is the curve which satisfies this equation that's the options basically is this clear to all of you till this point we will identify what is this curve we will identify that's a secondary story but till this point it's clear to all of you yes now let's identify what is this curve shall we plot in desmos but in exam we don't have desmos what we will do first i'll show you in desmos and i'll show the answer because i'm also excited a bit so to use desmos always desmos graphing calculator and uh, yeah so if you just plot it you can see x plus 3y whole square x plus 3y whole square okay plus 3x plus y whole square 3x plus y whole square you will see in lips of course 3x plus y whole square is equal to 1 okay so this is actually 1 so if you plot this equation you can see a small curve got generated here this is actually a small curve it's clearly an ellipse and the line y equal to x because one comma one point maybe somewhere uh, you know uh, one comma one you can see this one comma one point is here okay so if you take this axis connecting zero to one comma one whether that axis will be minor axis or major axis of course from diagram you can see this length is less as compared to this length so this one comma one line will be along minor axis okay so d would be the correct answer actually to this but anyway instead of see in exam now we have desmos nicely so you have plotted and you observed clearly by looking itself you can say this length i mean if you cut this line y equal to x then the line length y equal to x along this curve uh, i mean in between these two points will be definitely less than this large line okay so 1 comma 1 is a line along minor axis okay but how we'll show this mathematically so when you don't have desmos then looking at that equation how do you come to know this point okay look i'll tell you if you expand this slightly 10x square plus 10y square plus 6xy plus 6xy plus 12xy is equal to 1 this is what you have okay so this is what you have actually here this is what you get now if you look at the options for example let me write this in the box neatly 10x square plus 10y square plus 12xy is equal to 1 that's what you have okay now how to solve mathematical i'm showing okay without plotting graph of course you of course without plot plotting the graph i should teach you okay because in exam you don't have desmos with you clear so let's see that's what we are going now see here by looking at this equation you can clearly tell and by looking at this equation 
and by looking at these options you can clearly say it's not a circle yes because circle equation do not have this x y term correct what is the general equation of a circle general circle is something like if you have center at h comma k and radius is equal to r for example let's say radius is equal to small r this tells you the equation is x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to r square you know this this is a fundamental point correct because ultimately the definition of a circle is the locus of all the points which which are at a fixed distance from a given fixed point that's a circle okay so this is the equation of a circle if you expand this equation like x square plus h square minus 2x uh, 2hx y square plus k square minus 2yk is equal to r square if you expand this you will not have any xy term in the equation yes or no correct so please type in the chat box you will not have any xy term in the equation correct if you expand this you won't have any xy term in this equation but here you has got an xy term so clearly this equation is not a cyclic equation to all agree to this point everyone now let's see so now it has to be an ellipse okay so ellipse with major axis along one one ellipse with minor axis along one one so we have two possibilities now either the curve should be having a major axis along one comma one or it should have minor axis along one comma one correct so let us take both and see what happens so first let me take the case this is case one okay now let's draw an ellipse let us draw an ellipse of course okay so if you draw an ellipse one ellipse should have major axis along one one the other should have so major axis along one one so let's say this is the major axis we are taking so okay so it has major axis along one one so you can see one one is nothing but some point here so y equal to x line will pass through this clear so this is x this is origin and this is y 1 comma 1 is somewhere here okay and this is the axis this is the ellipse which has major axis along 1 comma 1 okay now if you go for this diagram it's a almost similar diagram of course okay so let's see now if you look at this then also it has got something like origin x y let's say 1 comma 1 is here now how do we decide let's see these points are a and this point is b you know ellipse has both the axes perpendicular to each other correct both the axis of ellipse are perpendicular to each other that means if one axis is lying along y equal to x the other axis would definitely lie along y equal to minus x correct so this is y equal to minus x clearly here also if one axis is along y equal to x then the other axis would be along y equal to minus x of course okay so the other axis would be along y equal to minus x you know this points y equal to minus x now let's plot these points a b c and d see it's taking this much time because i'm explaining you if you know these points it takes only one minute or one and a half minute to solve okay so this is point d similarly you have this a b c and d of course okay so a b c now somehow you calculate the point of intersection of this equation with x axis you will get these two uh, sorry with the line y equal to x you will get these two points similarly along with the line y equal to minus x you will get these two points so calculating coordinates of a b c d is very easy because you know this equation y equal to x and you know this equation y equal to minus x you also have the ellipse equation because this is the ellipse equation so it's not difficult for you to find these points a b c d okay similarly here of course in fact both the points will be same now when you calculate lengths okay a b and c d when you calculate the lengths a b and c d if ab is greater than cd then this diagram is correct 
If A B is less than C D, then this diagram is correct. Yes or no? Are you all getting the ideology? What we are doing? You cal since you have the lines and you also have the curve, you calculate points of intersection A B C D. Then when you calculate A B and when you calculate C D, if A B is greater than C D, then this is the correct diagram. And if A B is less than C D, then this would be the correct diagram. Yes? Is it true till this point? Yes or no? Please type in the chat box. Yes or no, guys? Please type in the chat box. Is the ideology clear? How we are going to solve this question? Is that clear to all of you? Okay. Now, if that's clear, then let's see. Identifying points of intersection. Identifying. Identifying points of intersection. Identifying points of intersection. Now, when you identify these points of intersection, first of all, the equation that you have is 10x square plus 10y square plus 12xy is equal to 1. Okay, 10x square plus 10y square plus 12x square equal to 1. So, for calculating a comma b points, the a comma b are the points of intersection of ellipse with x equal to y. So, which means these points, if you calculate a, b, then these points along with lying on the ellipse, they also lie on the line y equal to x. So if you put y equal to x in this equation, 10 plus 10, 20, 20 plus 12, 32, x square is equal to 1, x is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 32, which means this point has the coordinates 1 by root 32, comma 1 by root 32. Similarly, this point has the coordinates minus 1 by root 32, comma minus 1 by root 32. Obviously, this points are also 1 by root 32, comma 1 by root 32, and this points has the coordinates minus 1 by root 32, comma minus 1 by root 32. This is what you have. Okay. Now, because this this line this point is on the line y equal to x, so if x coordinate is 1 by root 32, y coordinate should also be 1 by root 32 by default. Okay. Then, if you calculate the coordinates of c comma d, let's see what you get. C comma D are the points which are on the line y equal to minus x. Okay, so if you put y equal to minus x in this equation, 20 x square is common. 20 minus 12 is 8 x square equal to 1. Okay, so 8 x square is equal to 1. So this implies x is equal to plus or minus 1 by root 8. So that means this point would be minus 1 by root 8 comma 1 by root 8 because this is on the line y equal to minus x. Similarly, this has got 1 by root 8 comma minus 1 by root 8 and ultimately this c has got minus 1 by root 8 comma 1 by root 8 and this got 1 by root 8 comma minus 1 by square root of 8 this is what you can write just by doing this simple calculation see calculating till here is very good then eliminating the options and then thinking about this points of intersection is also good now we have this lens this is a b and this is c d similarly this is a b and this is c d now you know how to calculate length, okay? You calculate AB, instead of AB, you calculate AB square, doesn't matter. And also you calculate CD square, because they are just lengths. So ultimately, if AB square is large, then AB is greater than CD. That's what we know. And now you can see, just by looking, the denominator is very large, okay? The numerator is almost one in all the coordinates, but in this case, the denominator is large, okay? So if you calculate length of AB, you'll get one by root 32, okay? Because uh, root of, 1 by root 32 whole square, you can see. Uh, so 2 by root 32 is what you'll get. And you can see by these coordinates that uh, this coordinates what I have plotted in the diagram, this coordinates will definitely imply AB less than CD. Yes or no? Because when you are calculating AB, square root value is 32. But when you are calculating CD, square root value is 8. Uh, I mean, the number under the square root is 8. So ultimately, this gives you a larger length. CD will be large. So which means this is the correct diagram actually. Yes? Can you understand this? If you are calculating lengths, when you calculate AB, ultimately 1 by root 32 will be less than 1 by root 8, okay? Or 2 by root 32 will be less than 2 by root 8. So that tells you that AB is less than CD. So this graph, whatever is on to my right side, is correct. Okay, because you'll be watching the screen like this, so. Two, okay? The graph which I have plotted here is actually correct graph. So this is a wrong graph actually here. Okay, so this is a wrong graph and you can understand this just by calculating the lens. Okay, 
in a uh, few uh, places you can find people teach this question with very complicated stuff like the conic sections and all but we don't we don't need that okay just using simple algebra you can identify whether it's an ellipse with minor axis along 1 comma 1 or major axis along 1 comma 1 2 okay is this clear to all of you i just want to tell you one uh, incident when i start when i started teaching okay 2017 uh, at that point roughly matrix will be used to get the equation of ellipse and then use simple maths yes that's it okay is the value of gate score of 2023 equal to that of 2024 as i got better marks the rank in 2023 but better gate score in 2024 yes they are equal shashi so you can apply with gate 2024 score okay because people don't check your rank they'll check your score okay score is the thing which is used for shortlisting uh, at different places uh, rank, uh, i mean marks and the rank are not used clear so better to use 2024 scorecard okay because your score is high good so uh, so what i was telling is when i have started teaching the one question that gave me a chance to teach in the beginning was this question okay because by the time um, people have uh, seen different solutions at different places and uh, they were very, uh, you know, illogical to be frank. Okay, just because they want to give a solution, they have given. Uh, so, but uh, this explanation was provided by me in the beginning. So that's how I got a chance. Okay. So, and I hope there's nothing complicated in this to understand. Okay. Once you get this equation, then get this points of intersection, which is very simple. Then identify just by looking at the coordinates, you can tell CD would be large. Okay. So minor axis, this minor axis of the ellipse is along this point one comma one. So that's why this option D is the correct answer. Okay, so anyway, D is the correct answer. Okay, some of you have marked B and C. Okay, fine. So, anyway, this is the correct answer in this case. Clear? Now, let's get back to this eigenvalues. Okay, so eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Sorry, sir, I couldn't attend yesterday's class. Uh, present seeing that now. We'll join for Monday again. Yeah, no issue. Okay, hi, Krishna. But you can follow. Okay, this is an individual topic, so it doesn't affect you. Now, let's see. So, for a matrix A, we have seen. For a matrix A, a non zero vector, a non zero vector x is said to be an eigenvector is said to be an eigenvector if there exists a scalar lambda such that lambda such that a x is equal to lambda x of course okay so basically we are interested in finding those directions where this matrix could not alter any rotation it could may change length but it do not actually disturb the configuration okay for calculating inverse of three by three methods, I've told you know in options whenever question they ask you to cal uh, which of the following is the inverse of this given matrix. Okay, don't try to calculate inverse. Just multiply that matrix with uh, the matrix in the options, which could give you correct answer, of course. Okay. So good evening. Look. So this ultimately tells you a minus lambda i is equal to zero into x is equal to zero, of course. And sorry. Okay, so see here, so this is basically a homogeneous system. Homogeneous system, of course. Okay, so this homogeneous system and for this system to have a non-trivial solution, a non-trivial solution ultimately that of a minus lambda i should be zero and this is called the characteristic equation which we have seen characteristic characteristic equation okay so characteristic equation now if this is characteristic equation then Ultimately, this equation is a polynomial equation in terms of lambda. Okay, only zero. I uh, didn't get you. Yeah, this because if you shift this here, then this right hand side becomes zero, right? And this should be zero because in last class we have seen uh, when we were talking about the uh, conditions for consistency of the system, if a homogeneous system has to have a non-trivial solution, the determinant of the coefficient matrix has to be zero. Okay, so we have seen this. 
that of a minus lambda i equal to zero actually and this is characteristic equation now for any matrix a for any square matrix i mean for any square matrix a for any square matrix a that of a minus lambda i equal to zero gives a polynomial equation gives a polynomial equation in terms of lambda correct in terms of lambda so when you solve this polynomial equation ultimately you'll get roots of that equation okay so that's how we actually calculate the eigenvalues now when you calculate these eigenvalues you can you will experience that uh, basically when you calculate these eigenvalues you'll end up with a polynomial equation and generally when they give you three by three uh, matrix okay then ultimately the degree of this equation is also a third order okay because let's see if i take a matrix example let a is equal to say i'm taking one uh, important matrix actually which gives you some idea about repeating eigenvalue so two two four let's say let's take this uh, matrix for example okay so if you take this matrix and if you calculate the determinant uh, if you calculate characteristic equation characteristic equation i'll give you a few points which could help so characteristic equation that of a minus lambda i is equal to zero so this tells you four minus lambda two 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 four minus lambda two 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 four minus lambda is equal to zero now ultimately if you simplify this matrix you will end up with a, uh, a, a cubic equation okay because it's a th uh, three by three matrix clear so this is actually a three by three matrix so if you uh, three by three determinant so if you simplify this you'll get lambda cube in this equation so let's uh, quickly solve after this i'll also tell you a technique how to write the characteristic equation directly if matrix is given but anyway first look how i'm doing four minus lambda into four minus lambda into four minus lambda which is four minus lambda whole square that i'm also writing it as lambda minus four square minus two to the four this is what here minus two into 8 minus 2 lambda minus 4 8 minus 2 lambda minus 4 plus 2 into 4 minus 8 plus 2 lambda this is what you get so this is equal to 0 of course okay so 2 plus 4 minus 8 uh, 4 minus 8 plus 2 lambda if you simplify this this is 4 minus 2 lambda this is 2 lambda minus 4 so you can understand something look this if you multiply a minus sign all over lambda minus 4 into lambda minus 4 whole square minus 4 minus okay we have multiplied a minus sign plus 2 into 4 minus 2 lambda of course okay so 4 minus 2 lambda minus 2 into uh, 2 lambda minus 4 is equal to 0 of course okay now if you pick a minus sign common here then this is like if you take a minus sign common you put a minus 2 here and this becomes 2 lambda minus 4 again 2 lambda minus 4 so you can observe one thing if you expand this okay so if you expand this for example what you'll get is a cubic equation how would the cubic equation look like lambda minus 4 okay so these are 2 lambda minus 4 of course so lambda minus 4 into if you simplify this lambda square minus 8 lambda plus 16 minus 4 12 minus 4 lambda okay so this is anyhow minus 4 times of 2 lambda minus 4 is equal to 0 of course okay if you slightly simplify this first let us look for the lambda cube so lambda cube will be only one lambda into lambda square then looking for lambda square terms you will have minus 4 lambda square uh, minus 4 lambda square minus 8 lambda square minus 12 lambda square is what you'll have here because this minus 4 into this gives you one lambda square term this lambda into minus 8 lambda gives you one more lambda square term okay first i'm showing the classical processor then we'll see what are the shortcuts what are the different things that's involved next looking for the lambda term so 12 into lambda so 12 lambda 12 lambda plus 32 lambda actually okay so 12 plus 4 into 8 32 so 12 plus 32 gives you 44 lambda 44 minus 8 gives you 36 then constant term minus 4 plus 12 minus 48 minus 48 plus 16 is 32 minus 32 is equal to zero of course okay so is equal to zero this is the equation that you got after a bit of simplifying 
now this is the equation that you got actually now how do you actually solve this equation that's what okay so you know there is of course a direct method for solving cubic uh, cubic equation but that's not a very day to day use usable method actually okay so let's see what all we can how we can actually solve this equation after some time but first of all i'll tell you when i give you this matrix how to get this equation in a easy way okay so how to get this equation in a easy way look first of all you know this equation will give you a cubic equation undoubtedly so lambda cube minus then for getting this coefficient see keep plus and minus alternatingly okay so you have a minus then if you add this diagonal elements okay which is trace of the matrix okay so you know trace is nothing but sum of the principal diagonal elements so if you add this uh, sum of principal diagonal elements then what you would get is 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 4 12 so 12 is what you have got lambda square plus then we have used minus so again go for plus now calculate the principal minus okay so what is principal minor like this is a principal diagonal element 4 lambda equal to lambda minus 4 both are right no because i have taken a minus sign now that's why clear because i have multiplied this equation with a minus sign okay so that's why uh, you can see this my instead of minus i have kept a plus but since i have reversed this i have retained this minus okay and this plus became minus see basically don't get confused in this equation I have multiplied with a minus sign totally so that this equation has got converted to lambda minus 4 into this plus 2 into this minus 2 into this of course okay but again I have swapped these two so that's why I have put a minus sign and then did the simplification clear now let's see lambda cube minus 12 lambda square since I have used minus this is plus now calculate the principal minus principal minus is nothing but minor of the principal diagonal elements and then add it okay so if you add so first of all this element if you take this element, uh, this column and this O, the minor 2 by 2 minus 16 minus 2, uh, 16 minus 4. Okay, so 16 minus 4, 12 plus. Then after, you take this element because it's also principal diagonal, then you delete this column and this O, you have 16 minus 4. Again, 12 plus. Again, if you take this 4 and eliminate this O, I el eliminate this column and this so then this minor is also 12 again so this is sum of three principal minors okay so this is first principal minor of this principal diagonal element this 12 second 12 is the principal minor of this element and third is actually principal minor of this lambda minus because I have used plus here so again minus calculate the determinant okay so if you calculate determinant of this matrix it is zero clearly right uh, no, it is not 0 actually sorry if you calculate this determinant what you'll have is 4 into 16 minus 4 12 minus 2 into minus 2 into 8 minus 4 4 plus 2 into 2 minus uh, sorry 4 minus 8 minus 4 so this gives you 4 12 are 48 48 minus 8 40 40 minus 8 is 32 is equal to 0 so this equation and this equation both are same clear lambda cube yes basically what i'm telling is this is lambda cube minus then trace of the matrix lambda square plus sum of principal minus into lambda then after minus 32 is equal to zero clear so what can be all the principal minus be equal to each other normally in many cases we'll see the eigenvalue is repeated okay that's what one specialty we have alex but in general the repeating eigenvalues the matrices with repeated eigenvalues generally uh, most frequently not all the times but most fre most frequently involves uh, a equality of the principal minus clear so let's see this equation is obtained by without doing all the simplification did you understand how to write the characteristic equation directly yes or no please type in the chat box clear did you all understand how we have framed that equation without actually simplifying this complete stuff so for any theory by thematics, you can do this easily. Okay, so it saves a bit of time in exam. Clear? So if I want to give you for a general theory by thematics A, A, A is equal to A11, A12, uh, A13. A21, A22, A23, A32, A33, 
if you calculate this that of a minus lambda i equal to 0 that of a minus lambda i equal to 0 this implies lambda cube minus trace of a or in general if you just okay first i'll write trace of a times lambda square plus m11 m22 m33 times lambda minus determinant of a is equal to 0 actually okay so this is equal to 0 means the number of distinct eigen values becomes 1 need not be it can be one repeating or two repeatings there could be uh, that's what i'm telling now it's not like all the matrices i'm telling because uh, when an eigen value is repeated it's like all the eigen values are same or maybe only two are same Th that ambiguity is there okay now let's see this is what you have the characteristic equation and if you want to write it in terms of elements of the matrix therefore lambda cube minus a11 a22 a33 lambda square plus a22 a33 minus a32 a23 plus okay then a11 uh, a33 minus a31 a13 plus then the last element a11 a22 minus a12 a21 this times lambda minus determinant okay then you know a11 a12 a13 a21 a22 a23 then a31 a32 a double three this complete equation is equal to zero that's it clear okay so this is what you have just a minute guys please so look here this is what we have as the equation right okay what about four by four <laughs> matrix yeah you have techniques but to understand this more actually you should understand the system of equations okay i, I mean not system of equations sorry this uh, polynomial equations okay so polynomial e understanding polynomial equations could actually give you more ideas about this matrices four by four matrices actually clear but i hope you have understood how i have generated this equation in a simple way clear is this clear to all of you did you all understand how we can actually generate a characteristic equation straight away by having the matrix itself okay these are principal minus sum of principal minus clear okay then so uh, anyway the job is forming this equation is simple then how to solve this equation that's the idea okay so many times it's uh, it's important for you to know certain things now do you know this method called synthetic division or Horner's division or Horner's method have you ever heard this yes have you ever heard that method synthetic division or Horner's method have you heard about this method no yes okay fine so basically what this method is it's like a normal division okay it's like a normal division so first of all by doing tail and error you will find one root of the equation okay so normally because it's a cubic equation you don't of course you have one formula recently it came into existence okay but still that formula involves a bit of complicated uh, uh, things okay so okay i'll explain no issue so see here like for example if you take this equation say x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6 is equal to 0 okay so you have this equation now how to solve this equation okay so first let's see first of all by trial and error you will find one out of this equation okay we'll see okay there is much more general techniques for solving cubic or whatever the equations using newton Raphson method and all numerical methods but anyway at this moment i'll just tell you x equal to 1 is definitely is a root for this equation how do i know this the reason is 
if sum of coefficients of the equation is zero, then ultimately x equal to one satisfies that, correct? Because if this is f of x, then if I put x equal to one, that means putting x equal to one will just give me some of the coefficients. Like for example, if I have f of x is equal to a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d. Let's suppose, okay, I have this. Then if I put f of one, if I put x equal to one, ultimately what I get is a plus b plus c plus d. That's what. Now, if I am telling, if I want to find the equation of this, and if this is coming up to be zero, if some of this coefficients is zero, then ultimately x equal to one has satisfied this equation. Yes or no? If my a, b, c, d are in such a way that some of the coefficients is zero, then ultimately when I put x equal to one, that equation gets satisfied. Yes, and you can check one plus minus six plus eleven plus minus six. This is zero. So clearly, x equal to one is out of this equation. Clear? So if x equal to one is one of the out, so you found x equal to one is one out of the equation, then how to calculate the other two? Then we'll go for this synthetic division or you have much smarter ways to do that, I'll tell you. So first, let me discuss the classical way of doing synthetic division. So first of all, you take this bracket. So first I had the coefficients, one minus six, 11 minus six, of course, okay? So one minus six, 11 minus six. Then x equal to one is what, you know, x equal to one is one of the root of this equation. So since x of one satisfies this equation, means x equal to one satisfies this equation, take the leading coefficient to be zero, okay? Take this zero by default, then after. See what, how I'm going to proceed. Okay, maybe this. So see how I'm proceeding. So you add these two, one plus zero is one. Then multiply this one with this one. So one into one gives a one here. So again, add these two, minus six plus one, minus five. So again, multiply this one with minus five and right here. So this is minus five. So 11 minus five, six. One into six is six. So minus six plus six, you have a zero, of course. Okay, so you got a zero. I'm repeating, it's like, it's just like a division. Okay, so normal division. So take zero here initially. Then if you add these two, you'll get some number. Just multiply with this quotient and one into one gives a one here. And if you add these two, you'll have minus five. Similarly, one into minus five gives you minus five. So 11 minus five is six. One into six is six. Again, you add these two, it becomes zero. So these numbers, one minus five, six are nothing but the coefficients of, because x cube minus six x square plus 11 x minus six. This can be written as, since you found x equal to one is one of the root, so x minus one will be definitely a factor of this equation, okay, of this expression. So if x minus one is a factor, so this is a cubic, this is a linear factor, so you have ax square plus bx plus c. Ultimately, you have a quadratic factor again. So this a, b, c values are given by this remainders here, one minus five and six. So this is one, one, then you can see this is minus five, and this is six. So ultimately this is a quadratic equation, you know how to factorize this. So x minus one, if you factorize this x square minus five x plus six, you have x minus two into x minus three. So this equation is equal to this, of course. So x equal to one, two, three are the roots of that equation, clear? That's what basically you have a Horner's method, okay? So Horner's division, basically synthetic division, of course, clear? That's how you calculate the equation. But in gate examination, since solving uh, a three by three uh, uh, cubic equation for which you don't have any standard roots is not possible, many times they'll give you the equation with one as one of the eigenvalue of the matrix, okay? Many times they said, not many, in fact, in all 100% questions which came now, if you want to calculate a cubic equation, the equation will be very, very simple, okay? So that either zero is one of the root. How do you identify whether zero is a root or not? This constant will not be there. If this constant is zero, or basically in this, equation, if this constant D is zero, then ultimately you can take X common. So X equal to zero is one of the root. So you can identify one root. Or else plus one is one of the root many times. Okay, if you add coefficients, you'll get zero. Or minus one is root sometimes. What if minus one? In case of minus one, I'm just giving you points. If sum of coefficients is equal to zero, then X equal to one is a root. Okay, again, I'm mentioning terms very loosely here. If sum of coefficients of odd powers of x is equal to sum of coefficients of even powers of x,
देन x इक्वल टू माइनस वन इज ए वूट ऑफकोर्स ओके सो दिस इज ए रूट एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस वन विल बी ए वूट ऑफ दैट इक्वेशन लुक आई एम टेलिंग यू यू कैन ऑल्सो चेक वन पॉइंट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नंबर ऑफ पॉजिटिव रूट्स ए इक्वेशन हैज लेट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज इक्वेशन एक्स क्यूब माइनस सिक्स एक्स प्लस इलेवन एक्स सिक्स एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस इलेवन एक्स माइनस सिक्स इक्वल जीरो सो लेट से इफ आई आस्क यू हाउ मेनी पॉजिटिव रूट्स विल दैट इक्वेशन हैव ओके and let's say x equal to you don't know this story so you don't know whether x equal to 1 2 3 whatever you roots or not i'm just asking what are the number of positive roots okay so if you want to tell number of positive roots of a equation is equal to number of sign changes in that equation okay like for example if you take this f of x equal to 0 which is uh, this equation x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6 is equal to 0 now in this equation How many times sign is changing? That is equal to number of positive roots of that equation. Like for example, in this equation, initially it is positive. Okay, one is positive. Positive, but this is negative. So positive to negative, there is one sign change. Negative to positive again. So second sign change. Positive to negative again. Third sign change. Okay. So that means in this equation, since three times sign is changing, so that equation will definitely have three positive roots. And if you check, ultimately, one, two, three, all three are positive. in that case okay yeah it's called wavy cover method because i know all these techniques because i have taught je advanced for good enough time so that's the idea but anyway uh, this kind of little fun stuff is good to learn always so number of times a sign changes in a equation is equal to the number of positive roots of that equation which you can understand by default right ultimately equation is going from positive to negative and all in that case okay and number of negative roots is equal to number of sign changes in f of minus x is equal to 0 clear like for example you take f of minus x if you put x equal to minus x in this equation minus x cube minus 6 of minus x whole square is again x square plus 11 of minus x minus 11x minus 6 is equal to 0 so it started with negative negative to negative no sign change no sign change no sign change so ultimately it has no negative root at all because all three are positive okay you can identify whether zero is a root or not by looking at this constant if this constant is non zero then ultimately zero is not a root if this constant is zero then zero is a root of that equation so just by looking at the equation you can say how many positive roots how many negative roots how many uh, whether zero is a root or not okay if you know these three things you know how many real roots are there for that equation okay and since this is a third equation third degree equation it should have three roots all the real and positive roots so let's say for example if my degree is 7 and i got only three real roots okay then that means four roots are complex so by looking at the equation we can talk about all this uh, technical things nicely about the equations understood are you all liking the class or not am i boring you too much by teaching all this stuff is the class getting interested or not it's already one hour 55 minutes so please type in the chat box are you all understanding this is it helpful to all of you Yes or no? Yeah, please type in the chat box. Yeah, okay. Some nice symbols are going flying on the right. Good. So I hope all of you are happy. Now let's talk about some important stuff. Okay. So again, get back to the story. Now you might have known these points also by this time. Uh, if you have a polynomial, if a not x power n plus a one x power n minus one. A to x power n minus two. Why I'm teaching all these things is because characteristic equation is a polynomial equation. That's it. Okay. Now let's see, and so on. Plus a n minus one x plus a n is equal to zero. So let's say this is the equation. Then, then, uh, okay. If that is equal to zero, and uh, alpha one, alpha two, and so on, alpha n. In bracket a a a not. This is not equal to zero because I want to show it as a nth degree equation. So this coefficient should not be zero. Are roots are roots of this equation? Okay. So ultimately, it's a nth degree equation. So it has n roots. Okay. So if this has n roots, then what all you can say is then first point. If you take sum of one root. Okay. So alpha i i equal to one to n. Let's say. 1 to n, so that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3, which is sum of the roots, this value is minus a1 by a0. Okay. Then, if you take two roots at a time, alpha i 
alpha j for example you take i equal to 1 i uh, i equal to uh, i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n of course so let's uh, i'm just denoting with summation means if you take two roots at a time this value would be since you have used plus uh, a minus here it is plus a2 by a naught if you take three roots at a time alpha i alpha j alpha k if you start taking three roots at a time then this would be minus a3 by a naught in general if you start taking uh, uh, you know k roots at a time alpha uh, uh, you know alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 okay uh, maybe some other indexes i'm using so alpha i alpha j alpha p alpha q and so on say alpha m taking k roots at a time k roots at a time so taking k roots at a time this is equal to minus 1 whole power k times a k by a naught this is what we have okay so minus 1 whole power k a k by a naught like for example you know for a quadratic equation if i ask you example if i ask you something like a quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and if i tell you alpha comma beta are roots of this equation then you know alpha plus beta is equal to now since you are taking one root at a time okay you are doing summation but you are taking one root at a time so the second coefficient with a negative sign minus b by a and if you take two roots at a time then only one combination is possible alpha into beta that's it only one combination is possible so alpha beta is equal to since you have taken two roots at a time so minus one whole square which is plus one c by a of course okay so this is what you get which you already know by uh, your uh, since you might have solved this quadratic equations many times this is what you have now clearly if you have a cubic equation if you have got a cubical cubic equation x cube plus bx square plus cx plus d equal to 0 and let's say alpha beta gamma are the equal are the three roots of this equation okay so if alpha beta gamma are the three roots of this equation now if you take only one root at a time like alpha plus beta plus gamma if you take only one root at a time then ultimately this is a leading coefficient which is a naught then the next coefficient since you have taken only one root at a time minus one whole power one which is minus b by a of course okay now taking two roots at a time so if you take two roots at a time you have the combinations alpha beta beta gamma gamma alpha this two roots at a time so minus one whole square which is plus one into this coefficient c divided by a of course okay and you take three roots at a time you have only one combination possible alpha beta gamma minus d by a okay so this is how you can keep generating but of course this is the general uh, system or general thing to talk about the relation between roots and coefficients of the equation actually understood yes or no is this clear to each and every one of you Yeah, it's minus d by a, of course. Okay, you have a minus. This don't have a minus. Fine. Did you understand this logic? Clear? Now, using these points, we can talk about some interesting things here. Look. For a matrix capital A, n by n if lambda 1 lambda 2 and so on lambda n are eigenvalues of a are eigenvalues of a then point number one sum of eigenvalues which is equal to lambda 1 plus lambda 2 which is equal to summation lambda i is nothing but trace of the matrix okay so just a minute guys please this someone is okay sorry there was a small disturbance that's it
So what we're talking? Yeah. So sum of eigenvalues lambda one plus lambda two and so on lambda n is equal to trace of a of course. Okay. Two product of eigenvalues. These two properties are utmost important. of a product i equal to 1 to n lambda. So if you take this, this is determinant of a actually here. Okay. So this is determinant of a. Sum of eigenvalues is equal to uh, trace of a and product of eigenvalues is equal to determinant of a of course. Okay. Then let's see one more thing. The eigenvalues of of A and A transpose are same. The eigenvalues of A and A transpose are same, of course. Okay, so the eigenvalues of A and A transpose are same. The reason is whenever you write that of A minus lambda I. Okay, so if you write debt of a minus lambda i then if you write this as zero if you make the transpose of this determinant still that could be zero yes or no correct if you write debt of a minus lambda i transpose is equal to zero the only thing this happens is this is equal to since a minus lambda i transpose is nothing but a transpose minus lambda into i transpose is again i that's all clear this is what you'll get so th these two equations will do not have any change in the determinant so that's why equation remains same and eigenvalues also remains same of course clear is this clear to all of you or not did you understand basically if you f if you uh, basically if you interchange rows and columns the resulting equation, the characteristic equation which results will not change actually. Got it? Okay, so that's one point. Now, let's understand one thing, one more point. Say this is point one, for example, point two, point three. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then point A. Eigenvalue of A power M is lambda power M, of course. Okay, so eigenvalue of A power M is lambda power M. You can easily check this. Like, let's see, you have an eigenvalue like uh, I, I'll show here a x is equal to lambda x for example okay you have this then if you multiply with a on both sides okay you have it on this because x is eigenvector of a and the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda so a x is equal to lambda x if you multiply with a on both sides a times of this vector okay so a times lambda x since this lambda is just a scalar, you can pull it out. So lambda into a x is what you can write. But since this x is eigenvector of a, this a x can be again replaced with lambda. So lambda into lambda x, so which gives you lambda square x, of course. So this implies a into x gives you a square x, of course. And this is equal to lambda square x, you can see. Okay. So this tells you the eigenvector of a square remains as x but the eigenvalue of a square turns out to be lambda square actually clear that's what you can understand so if lambda is an eigenvalue of a now if i for example do cube if i multiply one more a here also this ax will again give me one more lambda x it comes out to be lambda cube x okay so therefore if lambda is an eigenvalue of a then ultimately lambda power m is going to be eigenvector uh, eigenvalue of a power m actually here clear so this is what you have in general and so on you can generally repeat this till you achieve power m okay now let's see a few more points okay so let's see few more points b 
बी आइगन वैल्यू ऑफ ए इंटू ए स्क्वे प्लस बी ए प्लस सी आई इज इज द सेम थिंग अगेन ए लैमडा स्क्वे प्लस बी लैमडा प्लस सी दिस वुड बी द आइगन वैल्यू बिकॉज क्लियर यू कैन सी इफ यू डू दिस सेम स्टोरी लाइक यू नो ए स्क्वे एक्स इज इक्वल टू लैमडा स्क्वे एक्स दिस इज वन then b a so if you uh, for example if you multiply a small a here then this also turns out to be small a then after b times a x is equal to b times lambda x this is what you have then after c times i into x or c times i into x of course is equal to eigen values of i is only one so we have c times x that's what you have so if you add these three equations this tells you a a square plus b a plus c i operating on x will give you something like a lambda square plus b lambda plus c operating on x that means for this matrix this is the eigen value eigen value actually okay so that's all then Coming to one more point, of course. C. Eigen value of adjoint of A. This is important again. Sometimes eigen value of adjoint of A is or uh, are eigen values of adjoint A values of adjoint A are det A by lambda one, det A by lambda two. And so on. Det a by lambda n actually. Okay, so this is what you have the eigen values of a uh, adjoint a. Okay, so eigen values of adjoint a actually here. Then you can also see eigen values of a inverse. Eigen values of a inverse. Anyway, this property I have already told you. If eigen values of a power m are lambda power m, so if that m value is minus one, lambda one power minus one, which is one by lambda one. One by lambda two, and so on. One by lambda n actually here. Okay, so that's what we have. So is this a condition which holds always true? When that equal to zero, eigen value will be zero. One of the eigen value is zero. Okay, we'll see because product of eigen values is equal to determinant. If one of the eigen value is zero, then definitely product of all the eigen values is zero. So that means determinant has to be zero. Clear? Now let's see fourth point. Singular matrix, singular matrix will always have, or singular matrix always has zero as an eigenvalue. Will always have zero as an eigenvalue for the same logic what I told now, as an eigenvalue. Clear? So this has an eigenvalue. The reason is. A product of all the eigen values is equal to determinant. So if that has to be zero, then definitely product of all the eigen values has to be zero. That means at least one of the eigen values has to be zero. Clear? Then you can also see this point. Eigen values of okay, uh, uh, eigen values of uh, this a and a power m are same, and a and a transpose uh, a and a power m are not same. Of course, lambda power m. Then a and a transpose are same. We have told this point. Eigen value or zero is always an eigen value of zero is always an eigen value of zero is always an eigen value of an odd order skew symmetric matrix of an odd order skew symmetric matrix okay so this is always an uh, eigen value of a odd order skew symmetric matrix because we have shown in determinants every odd order skew symmetric matrix has zero determinant and if determinant is zero then definitely zero is one of the eigen values okay then we'll go for some other important points actually 
the eigen vectors of uh, sorry the eigen values of aerial symmetric matrix of aerial symmetric matrix this point is in fact very important it directly the statement itself came as previous gate question many times are always real okay so this will be always real the eigen values of a real symmetric matrix are always real because when you solve a equation you can have complex roots but if the matrix is a singular is a symmetric matrix then ultimately it has got all real matrix uh, all real eigen values anyone from mechanical or civil here is there anyone from mechanical civil aerospace in fact anyone who is there who studied strength of materials who studied strength of materials actually solid mechanics in other words is there anyone who have studied solid mechanics or strength of materials no one prakasham you are there still only prakasham is there mechanical okay if any of you have studied strength of materials you might have studied one thing if you take the state of stress at any point of course this dimension being very small if you take the stress as sigma xx sigma xx of course next time when i teach some fluid mechanics or something i'll give detailed discussion but you might have seen this matrix okay so if you have seen this matrix uh, i mean this is the state of stress condition you will write this in matrix form you might have written this okay and you might have studied this formulas okay this are basically the principal stresses okay you might have seen if you calculate this principal stresses you will always get real numbers as or no have you seen just one minute i'll come back to the generalization but i am talking about one specific case uh, one of the application in technical subjects okay so if you calculate this sigma 1 sigma 2 principal stresses you will always get real numbers you will never get complex numbers as or no correct if you calculate this principal stresses you always get only real numbers maybe decimals okay but real numbers the reason is this matrix is symmetric these two elements are equal for the equilibrium of this body okay for this block so ultimately this matrix is a symmetric matrix and if this matrix is symmetric these values are nothing but eigen values of this matrix okay sigma 1 sigma 2 are nothing but the eigen values of this stress tensor and if you calculate this eigen values then you will get the principal stresses okay and since this matrix is symmetric this values are always real numbers and more importantly you can understand one thing you have if you anyone can understand in fact once you have this equations sigma 1 plus sigma 2 if i do let's say sigma 1 is with plus sign and sigma 2 is with minus sign if you add this you will get sigma xx plus sigma yy correct yes or no because if sigma 1 is this equation with the Uh, this expression with plus sign and sigma 2 is this same expression with minus sign then ultimately if you add sigma 1 and sigma 2 this part gets eliminated and two times of this will give you sigma xx plus sigma yy okay and this sum of eigen values is nothing but trace of the matrix okay so all this are basically physical applications even in uh, case of vibrations you can get natural frequencies using matrices and eigen values but anyway we have lot of uh, things like this so just i'm uh, giving the points here in a nutshell okay chalo let's go to more points 7 the eigen values of the eigen values of upper triangular lower triangular triangular or diagonal matrix 
uh, the principal diagonal elements of the matrix. Principal diagonal elements of the matrix of the matrix. Like I have told you, if you have a principal diagonal, if you have either upper triangular or lower triangular matrix or basically diagonal matrix, the determinant is just equal to the product of the principal diagonal elements. That's what I have told you. Correct. Now, since I is uh, I is basically identity matrix, so I is a diagonal matrix. A minus lambda i. Let's say for example, if A is upper triangular, okay, then A minus lambda i will also be upper triangular. Correct. Yes. I uh, just a minute, please. So it's a slight emergency, that's why I have to attend. It's almost like 14 to 15 calls from them, so that's it, okay? So yeah, so let's see the principal diagonal elements of the matrix. The reason for this is, if A is, say, A is equal to A11, A12, A13, 0, A22, A23, for example, and 0, 0, A33, okay? So this is what we have. So what does this tell you is, this implies that of a minus lambda i is equal to a11 minus lambda a12 a13 0 a22 minus lambda a23 0 0 a33 minus lambda actually okay so this is what we have now clearly this matrix or if you just take it as a matrix this matrix is also upper triangular upper triangular of course okay so if this matrix is also an upper triangular matrix then you have that of a minus lambda i is equal to 0 implies see product of the principal diagonal elements that means a11 minus lambda a22 minus lambda a33 minus lambda is equal to 0 of course okay so this ultimately tells you these are the factors it's a direct factorized form so lambda can take the values a11 a22 a33 that's it okay so basically it they, they are nothing but the principal diagonal elements actually clear to all of you alex get aspirant sagnika mita dipankar gautami alex all of you yes so is this clear to all of you this that of a minus lambda is equal to zero will again give you the pin upper triangular matrix and ultimately the principal diagonal elements themselves become the eigenvalues like this okay Yes or no? So please type in the chat box. Is this clear to all of you? Yes? Everyone? So all of you please type in the chat box. Now let's go to a uh, few more properties actually. So let's uh, go here. 9, 8. Eigen values of orthogonal matrix. 
orthogonal matrix R of unit modulus R of unit modulus means they can be complex numbers but the magnitude of them is always one okay so R of unit modulus you can see how this can happen a x is equal to lambda x for example if you multiply with a transpose okay so if you multiply with a transpose a transpose a x is equal to a transpose times lambda x of course okay so this is what you'll get now you can see one thing if you take this as i because a transpose into a is i i times x is equal to a transpose times lambda x of course okay so this can tell you since ix is equal to x 1 by lambda times x is equal to a transpose x means you can say if this a is eigenvector of x then uh, sorry x is eigenvector of a and lambda is the eigenvalue then corresponding eigenvalue for this is 1 by lambda okay but a into a transpose equal to i that means this lambda into 1 by lambda will always give you 1 okay so that's why this orthogonal matrix has always uh, 1 as one of the eigen uh, sorry this uh, orthogonal matrix is always having eigenvalues of one unit modulus okay then ninth point eigenvalues of skew symmetric matrix eigenvalues of skew symmetric matrix are either zero either zero or purely imaginary purely imaginary okay so they are either zero or purely imaginary okay so basically if you have an skew symmetric matrix you will have the eigenvalue to be either zero or a purely imaginary zero matrix then using these concepts and points let us try to solve some questions okay so let us solve this question two eigenvalues of the matrix the two eigenvalues of a matrix 2 1 1 p have a ratio of 3 is to 1 okay which means the two eigenvalues are in the ratio 3 is to 1 for p equal to 2 another value of p for which eigenvalues have the same ratio of 3 is to 1 is dash okay so let's see it's a integer type and i'm giving you 90 seconds to solve this come on solve this question every one of you please solve this Come on, quick, faster. The eigenvalues of what the uh, what the eigenvalues are in the ratio three is to one. Then, apart from p, what is the other value such that this three is to one is valid? Check it fast. Ashwini is telling p equal to one. Ashwini Kumar Biswal. Okay, maybe. faster a bit fast please do p equal to 1 alex is telling 1 shivangi 1 okay so it's running up chalo let's see whether it's 1 or not if you solve this a is equal to say for example this matrix is a 2 1 1 p of course okay so this is what we have and eigenvalues are in the ratio eigen values are in the ratio eigenvalues are in the ratio 3 is to 1 say if one eigenvalue is lambda other eigenvalue is 3 lambda okay then ultimately eigenvalues are in the ratios 3 is to 1 of course okay so if one eigenvalue is lambda the other eigenvalue is 3 times lambda actually so let's see we have lambda plus 3 lambda is equal to 2 plus p this is nothing but trace of the matrix because if one value is lambda and another eigenvalue is 3 lambda then lambda plus 3 lambda should be equal to 2 plus p this implies lambda is equal to 2 plus p by 4 this is what we have 
okay, 2 plus p by 4. Similarly, if you do other thing, product of the eigenvalues lambda into the lambda is equal to 2p minus 1. This is 2p minus 1, of course. Okay, so this tells you 4 lambda square is equal to 2p minus 1, and you have this equation for lambda, which is 2 plus p by 4. So if you replace here, 4 into 2 plus p by 4 whole square is equal to 2p minus 1. Then you can see this 4 gets one more 4 here. So p square plus 4p plus 4 is equal to 8p minus 4, of course. So if you simplify, p square minus uh, 4p minus 8p. So this is minus 4p and 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 8 is equal to 0. That's what you have. So you can solve this. p minus 2 whole square is equal to minus 4, of course. So p minus 2 whole square plus 4, correct? So is everything fine? 8p minus 4, just a minute, 2p minus 1, 4 lambda square is equal to 2p minus 1. So 4 into lambda is 2 plus p by 4, 2. So if this is 2 plus p by 4, then uh, 2 plus p by 4 whole square is equal to 2p minus 1. So 4 will cancel one more uh, 4 here. So p square plus 4p plus 4 is equal to 8p minus 4. So if simplify terms, p square minus 4p plus 8 is equal to 0. So p is coming to be complex numbers, right? Yes or no? P is coming up to be complex numbers. This have a ratio of 3 is to 1. So if 1 is lambda, the other is 3 lambda. So 3 lambda plus lambda is 2 plus p, which is 4 lambda. So 4 to lambda equal to 2 plus p by 4. And lambda into 3 lambda is of course 2p minus 1 determinant. So 2p minus 1, yeah, 2, 4 lambda, sorry. This, I have done a mistake. Just a minute. So this is 3 lambda square. Lambda into lambda is 3 lambda square is equal to 2p minus 1. So 3 into lambda square, lambda square is p plus 2 whole square by 16 is equal to 2p minus 1. So 3 p square plus 12p plus 12 is equal to 32p minus 16. Okay, so that 2p minus 16, 3 p square minus, okay, so 12 minus 32 minus 20 p plus 28 is equal to 0 of course okay so this is the equation that you're getting correct so you can see if you put a p equal to 2 which is one of the solution okay so if you have p as one of the solution then if you simplify if p is one of the equation then 3 8s are 24 24 minus sorry 3 4 are 12 12 minus 40 minus 28 plus 28 it is 0 so sum 2 plus another value of p should be 20 by 3. So p is equal to 14 by 3 is what you're getting. Okay, so p equal to 14 by 3 is what you're getting. Correct? p equal to 14 by 3 is the value which gives you the eigenvalues in the ratio 3 is to 1 apart from being 4. Okay? Is this clear to all of you? p equal to 14 by 3 is the other solution, other value of p which gives you the roots in 3 is to 1 ratio. Okay? Yes or no? Are you learning 1? Seriously, if you put 1, then roots will be in the ratio 1 is to 3? Yes or no? Yeah, please check and tell me. See, if you simplify, 3 lambda square is equal to 2p minus 1, but lambda is p plus 2 by 4. So p plus 2 whole square by 4 square, 16 is equal to p minus 1. Okay, then if you expand this, p square plus 4p plus 4, so 3p square plus 12p plus 12 is equal to 32p minus 16 is what you have. So if you simplify 3p square, this comes here minus 20p. So 12 plus 16 is equal to 28 is equal to 0. So p automatically satisfies this equation. p equal to 2 is one of the out. Okay, so p equal to 2 will satisfy this because 3 into 4, 8. Sorry, 3 into 4, 12, 12 minus uh, 20 into 40. So 12 minus 40 is minus 28, minus 28 plus 28 is 0. So p equal to 2 satisfies this. One more root that we have is, so sum of the roots is equal to 20 by 3. So p equal to 14 by 3, of course. 3 to 6, so 20 minus 6 is 14 divided by 3. So 14 by 3, which is equal to, so uh, 4.67, if you want to two decimals. This is the other value of p. Monica, you are getting this? 
P equal to 2 is only one out, okay? P equal to 2 is one out, which is already given here, okay? They are asking other value of P. P equal to 2 is already given, no need to solve for P equal to 2, okay? That's what I'm telling, clear? So 14 by 3 would be the other value of P, which could give you the outs in the ratio of the H to 1. Okay? Fine, guys. So let's go to the next question quickly. So 4.67, if some of you have entered, 4.67, then okay, fine. So chill, solve this question. If the characteristic polynomial of a 3 by 3 matrix M over real numbers is, this is the equation, okay? So lambda cube minus 4 lambda square plus A lambda plus 30 is equal to 0, okay? A belongs to real numbers. One of the eigenvalues is 2. Then the largest among the absolute values of the eigenvalues of M is dash, okay? So M has three eigenvalues for which this cubic equation, we have the characteristic equation. So if you have this characteristic equation and one of the eigenvalues is given, so 2 is one of the eigenvalues, then if you calculate the eigenvalues of M and if you take the magnitudes, okay, then which is the largest or the basically absolute largest among the absolute values of eigenvalues of M, clear? So do this, I'm giving uh, into the type again and I'm giving 120 seconds maybe. Solve this question correctly, everyone. That is the characteristic equation, okay? And if that is the characteristic equation, then of course one eigenvalue is given to what would be the largest among the absolute eigenvalues of M. So come on, do this. You have time. Fast. largest of absolute values okay so clearly answer would be either 2 or more than 2 I know this because one of the eigenvalues is 2 if 2 is the largest then answer is 2 if there is something beyond 2 if you take when you take the modulus then ultimately that would be the answer 0 will not be the answer Ashwini Pakka. answer would come either 2 or more than 2 because it's clearly given one of the eigenvalues is 2 okay let's say if 2 is largest then 2 is the answer if there is some absolute value which is more than 2 then ultimately answer will be more than 2 Think. Careful. Faster, guys. Pick four is coming. Okay, maybe. Possible. Okay, because it's more than two, clearly. Come on guys, a bit fast. Okay, so see here. Then let's see solution. Let eigenvalues of M, eigenvalues of M are lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3 given lambda 1 is equal to 2 for example okay so one of the eigenvalues is 2 they have given one eigenvalue is 2 actually if one eigenvalue is 2 since if you take sum of eigenvalues okay first let us one, let's write one more statement given characteristic equation given characteristic equation is lambda cube minus 4 lambda square plus a lambda plus 30 is equal to 0 okay so this is the characteristic equation a is not given to you but you can do one thing look we have lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is equal to 4 because from this equation ultimately this is 4 and you know one of the eigenvalues is 2 this implies lambda 2 plus lambda 3, the sum of other two eigenvalues should be 2, okay, because total sum is 4, so out of those 4, one of the eigenvalues is 2, so clearly lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is 2. Similarly, 
if you look at the determinant lambda 2 lambda lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 if you look at the determinant then negative of this number which is minus 30 okay so this is minus 30 so clearly but you know lambda 1 is 2 this tells you lambda 2 into lambda 3 is equal to minus 15 okay because clearly you can see this is minus 30 so minus 30 divided by 2 which is minus 15 of course so you know by looking at these two if you factorize you can understand lambda 2 is equal to 5 because sum should be 2 and product should be minus 15 so lambda 2 is 5 and lambda 3 is minus 3 of course so that if you add these two you'll get 2 and if you multiply these two you'll get minus 15 of course so lambda 1 is equal to 2 lambda 2 is equal to 5 and lambda 3 is equal to minus 3 of course okay so if you take magnitudes therefore mod lambda 1 is equal to 2 mod lambda 2 is equal to 5 and mod lambda 3 is equal to 3 of course now if you take the absolute values of eigenvalues of m the largest is actually here so this is the largest largest so the largest is 5 of course clear yes or no is this clear to all of you did you understand if you see i know what mistake many of you might have done first of all you will try to put this lambda equal to 2 because you know one of the eigenvalues is 2 and you are interested in finding this a okay after you find this a again what you do is you will put lambda equal to 2 then factorize and find out this phi comma minus 3 outs yes or no is this what many of you have tried to do correct please type in the chat box many of you might have tried something like put lambda equal to 2 in that equation calculate a then find the roots of the equation then once again and you get roots as 2 then 5 and minus 3 then by the time you do all this thing the time would have finished yes or no how many of you have done this come on tell me Monica Shivangi Alex Ashwini Alex you tried that right yeah I know because I can I have been seeing students for past seven years so I know people might have done that okay but need not get the value of here in fact to confuse you that's the main intention they have given this number okay whenever something is not known you will spend time in doing that okay so anyway five is the answer without need of a so let's see if anyone have entered five okay chalo let's go to the next question one more question we'll solve before we go for eigenvectors okay this will deal a bit later this also will uh, deal a bit later so this is one important thing again okay so come on solve this question i'll give you again time of maybe uh, some 120 seconds again so two minutes solve this solve this question there's a matrix of that form it is given that a has only one real eigenvalue then the real eigenvalue of a is dash come on do it C, 15, maybe, possible, because that's in one of the options. Faster, think a bit fast and try to answer this. Guys, I think I need two more lectures for linear algebra. We'll do on Monday and Tuesday also, okay? Because uh, one day definitely I need for this, uh, you know, uh, one day I need for this, uh, I try two methods, basically uh, LD decompositions, then uh, singular value decompositions, SVDs, okay? Because in data science, SVDs is one very important thing. So we'll do all these things, okay? And uh, obviously, in one lecture, we'll talk about uh, vector spaces and uh, row space, column space, all these things, subspaces. Okay. That would be maybe on Tuesday, okay? In Monday's class, we'll talk about diagonalization then linear combination of vectors then we'll talk about, about uh, SVDs singular value decompositions and we'll also talk about uh, this uh, iterative methods like LU decomposition, Gauss elimination, Gauss seedal these kind of things and then in Tuesday's class we'll talk about vector spaces and properties of some partition matrices okay because I promised that I'll teach also data science syllabus so we'll include those also okay SVDs partition matrices then after uh, you know a few other things okay power matrix things like that so chalo let's solve anyway meanwhile others try so you can understand one thing debt of a minus lambda i is equal to see 
I'll give you one minus lambda, two, three, four, five, five, one minus lambda, two, three, four, four, five, one minus lambda, two, three, then three, four, five, one minus lambda, two, two, three, four, five, one minus lambda, of course. Okay. So this is what we have. Now let's see, for example, if I make a transformation, C1 changes to C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5. If I make this transformation, then you will have the determinant something like sum of all these elements is 15. Okay. Similarly, sum of all these elements is 15 and so on. This is also 15. Now you will have 15. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll write somewhere here. So you will see debt of a minus lambda i is equal to. Now, if you take this, if you apply the transformation, 15 minus lambda will be common in all the columns. Sorry, in all the rows, of course. Okay, so 15 minus lambda, 15 minus lambda is what you'll have. Then 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, all the elements is what you'll have. Okay, so which means you can take 15 minus lambda as one of the factor which is common because if one element is common in all the rows, you can take out that as common. So 15 minus lambda, if you take out common, then we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, then uh, maybe it's like 1 minus lambda, 2, 3, 4, and a lot of things you have. So you can observe this 15 minus lambda can be taken as one of the factor. By the time you equate this to 0, because debt of a minus lambda equal to 0, 15 minus lambda should be 0. So lambda should be 15 is one of the eigenvalue. And they're told it has only one real eigenvalue. So then the real eigenvalue is dash. So in general, by performing these transformations, if either sum of all the elements of A o is constant for all those, or if sum of all the elements of the column okay, is constant for all the columns, then definitely that scalar is the eigenvalue. Like you can write it in the properties. Maybe I'll give one more property here. Tenth property, let's say. Tenth. If all, if sum of all the elements of A o all the elements of a row or column is constant is constant is constant for all the rows or columns then and is equal to k let's say and and is equal to k then k the, then one of the eigenvalues then one of the eigenvalues of the matrix then one of the eigen values of the matrix of the matrix is then one of the eigenvalues of the matrix is k of course okay so this is one very important point and how you get this uh, and how you get this point is because of the transformation what i have applied like you can see in general that is if you have this matrix a11 a12 and so on a1n a21 a22 and so on a2n so similarly you have a n1 because it should be n by n matrix to calculate determinant a n n so let's say sum equal to k similarly here sum equal to k maybe and so on this also you have sum equal to k this k is constant in all the columns okay similarly if you have for example this total sum is equal to uh, k so similarly this total is equal to k and so on this total equal to k then also the, uh, let's say for example if this column is giving you k2 okay and this is giving you k2 and so on this is giving you k2 then k2 is also one of the eigenvalues okay so this point is important and you can get this by this transformation whatever I have uh, sorry what are the transformation i have applied here so that's the transformation clear so now let us solve this if the given matrix 1 minus 1 2 0 1 0 1 2 1 one of the eigenvalues is 1 okay then the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue 1 are. so how to calculate the eigenvectors okay so let's see how to calculate this Ex solution i'm solving this question you can see 
ये इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस वन टू जीरो वन जीरो वन टू वन एक्चुअली हियर ओके सो दिस इज द मैट्रिक्स एंड देव गिवन यू लैमडा इक्वल टू वन इज वन ऑफ द आइगन वैल्यू ओके सो लैमडा इक्वल टू वन इज वन ऑफ द आइगन वैल्यू देन आइगन वैक्टर्स लेट सी ये एक्स इज इक्वल टू लैमडा एक्स सो हियर देव गिवन यू दिस लैमडा इक्वल टू वन ऑफकोर्स सो ये एक्स शुड बी एक्स दैट्स इट ओके सो इनिशियली सिंस यू डोंट नो वॉट टू टेक फॉर एक्स वील टेक वन माइनस वन टू जीरो वन जीरो वन टू वन देन यू कैन यूज मे बी एक्स वन एक्स टू एक्स थ्री द जनरल कॉम्पोनेंट्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स वन एक्स टू एक्स थ्री एक्चुअली हियर ओके सो दिस इज वॉट यू हैव नाउ इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई दिस एक्स दैट शुड बी इक्वल टू एक्स सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई वी गेट एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू प्लस टू एक्स थ्री देन यू हैव एक्स टू देन एक्स वन प्लस टू एक्स टू प्लस एक्स थ्री दिस is equal to x1 x2 and x3 of course okay so this is what we get now ultimately if you equate these elements x2 will be equal to x2 means this element is always equal to this element whatever the value of x2 may be it doesn't matter so whatever you keep for x2 this is always x2 so there is no issue in that then equating these two terms you can see first one this implies x1 minus x2 Plus two x three is equal to x one. Okay, so that's what we get. X one minus x two plus two x three should be equal to x one. So this equation tells you x one x one. If you cancel, you have two x three is equal to x two. So x three is equal to x two by two. This is what you get. Okay. Similarly, if you go for the and second column, second row, if you equate x two is always equal to x two. Doesn't matter what the value of x two is. If you equate the third row, let's see. X one plus two x two. Plus x3 is equal to x3, of course. So if you cancel this, x1 is equal to minus 2x2. This is what we get. Okay. Now, if you reconstruct the vector back, this implies x is equal to x1, x2, x3. Since you have everything in terms of x2, we can write minus 2x2, x2, x2 by 2, of course. Okay. So Now, from all these elements, if you take x two by two common, you have minus four. Uh, this is two, of course, and this uh, value is one. That's what you have. Okay, so minus four, two, one could be one of the eigenvectors. You can see because depending on the value you choose for x two, you can have lot of vectors in that direction. But this is the vector which is basically giving you the eigenvector. Okay, so therefore. Any combination. So, if you take this combination, minus x two, uh, this x two by two has some constant alpha, alpha times of minus four, two, one, where alpha not equal to zero, of course. This gives you the set of eigen vectors actually. Okay. So, alpha times of minus four, two, one, which is actually in this option, option B. So, this is how you basically calculate eigen vectors of a matrix. Clear? So, is this clear to all of you? Yes or no? Please type in the chat box. Yes or no? So please type in the chat box. Is this clear to all of you? Did you all understand how to calculate these eigen vectors? Okay. If you have one eigen value, then corresponding to that eigen value, you can have one uh, basically number of directions depending on the algebraic multiplicity. We'll see what is algebraic multipli uh, algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity, all these things. Succinct. What is the meaning of succinct? You want me to repeat it again? Okay. So, a x should be equal to lambda x, but here lambda equal to one. So, if you put lambda equal to one, a x should be equal to x. So, a into x should be equal to x. I have equated. Now, if you equate the corresponding elements, then you can see x one equal to x one minus x two plus two x three equal to x one because this first element, because this first element should be equal to this first element actually. So if you simplify that, you got x three is equal to x two by two. Then this x two is equal to x two will happen for any like if this is one, this is also one. If this is zero, this is also zero. So it doesn't matter whatever the value you keep for x two. This second element is always equal to second element. Similarly, in the third case, if you equate and if you simplify, the third case gives you this simplification: x one equal to minus two x two. So if you put back x one, x two, x three values, x one equal to minus two x two, 
x2 is same as x2, x3 is equal to x2 by 2, which we have ca calculated in this case, okay? So if you take x2 by 2 out, we have minus 4, 2, 1. So this gives you the direction of the vector, which is which in which all the eigenvectors lies. Clear? Yes or no? Please type in the chat box. See, physically eigenvectors tells you the directions, okay? In which the matrix cannot perform any transformation in rotation, okay? It can only change the length in that direction. You take any vector in that direction and you apply this A, it will only change the length of that vector. Clear? Okay. So let's solve one more question so that you can have much better idea. See, the value, okay, before solving this question, you solve this question so that it could slightly make the life easy. Then you can go back to the previous question. Okay. So I'm giving you some time. So for previous question, which question I have set the poll actually? I have set the poll for which of the questions? C, okay, eigenvalue. So C, 100%, Ashwini, Satvik, nice. So now for this question, I'm again connecting the poll. So I'm giving you 60, no, 90 seconds, you can try, yeah. So this is the matrix, and that's one of the eigenvector. In the matrix equation, Ax is equal to R, so A into X is equal to R. One of the eigenvalues of the matrix A is dash. So come on, do this. I've given you only 90 seconds, so that's good enough to solve. Come on, tell me. faster a bit after this we'll solve one more question so that could <coughs> give us some idea c all of you are typing c patam panchal c Fine, okay, so anyway, let's see. One of the eigenvalues of the matrix, okay? So if you, for example, multiply this, let's see what happens. A, X is equal to R, this is what you have got, okay? If you slightly observe this R, if you just slightly observe, this X and this R, you can clearly understand this R is equal to 16 times of X, yes or no, correct? If you take this vector r, this vector is basically 16 times of this. 16 if you multiply to all the elements, then this is what you're going to get. So this r is equal to 16 times of x clearly. So this means a x is going to be 16 times x, of course. So clearly, lambda equal to 16 is an eigenvector. is an eigenvector. So lambda equal to 16 is one of the eigenvectors. That's it, okay, straight away. So if you multiply, you can understand this 4 into 8, 8 into 1, 4 into 4, you'll get 32, okay? But that same as doing this. So C is correct answer. So now solve this question. It's a good question. Yeah, many of you have done it right. Ashwini, Pratham, Panchal. I think few more C's has come. Okay, Prakasam, good. Chalo, solve this question. The value of P says that this vector 1, 2, 3 is an eigenvector of this matrix. Do it. I'm giving 120 seconds. Oh, sorry. Stop the poll. Integer type. Okay, 120 seconds. Yeah. Do it. Do it a bit faster. Do it a bit fast, guys. Quick. 
So in this matrix, one element is missing. You want to calculate what is that element if this vector is one of the eigenvector for that matrix. Zero, maybe, a chance. I think P is not zero. Yeah, maybe uh, there's a chance that P need not be P is not zero actually. That can happen. Yeah, correct. P is not zero. One, no, P is not one. Just now I have calculated. Okay. Yeah, if I'm sure, I think P should be. Seven, so it should be seventeen, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let's see how it's seventeen. Quickly. Solution. Okay. So value of p such that this is one of the eigenvector. If x is equal to one, two, three, is an eigenvector. Is an eigenvector. This implies a x should be equal to some lambda, some scalar times of this x. Okay, so let us calculate 4, 1, 2, p, 2, 1, 14, minus 4, 10. So this value multiplied with 1, 2, 3 is equal to some constant, say lambda, 2 lambda, and this is 3 lambda. This is what you should get. Okay, so lambda, 2 lambda, and 3 lambda. So if you simplify this equation, let's see what you get. 4 plus 2, 6, 6 plus 6, 12. Then after, p plus 4 plus 3, okay, so p plus 7, 14 minus 8, uh, 6, 6 plus 30, 36, is equal to lambda, 2 lambda, and 3 lambda actually. So if you equate these two matrices, this ultimately tells you lambda is equal to 12. So 3 lambda is equal to 36, of course, valid. Now, this also implies p plus 7 is equal to 2 lambda, which is 24, okay, because lambda is 12, so p equal to 24 minus 7, which is 17. That's it, okay. So, p is equal to 17 is the correct answer in this case, clear. So, this is about eigenvalues. So, we have few properties of eigenvectors also, which we will uh, see, but before that, I just want you to think something. So try to answer this question. So this is your homework for today. Homework. So this is your homework actually. And then, uh, well, only that question I think uh, I can give as homework today. Okay, only one question for today. But please try that question because I thought of covering other uh, stuff in iterative methods and eigenvector properties, but it's okay. Time is short. So anyway, so today we have mainly discussed about eigen values and also a bit of eigen vectors actually clear so we have discussed about these things but of course there is much to talk about this eigen vectors okay so eigen values you have seen lot of properties today but eigen vectors you still have a few things to uh, discuss okay so we will talk about properties of eigen vectors what uh, how you can actually calculate eigen vectors if eigen vector eigen value is repeating then how you will calculate the eigen vectors we will talk all these things and we'll also try to go into diagonalization on Monday's class. Okay, so tomorrow, you know, Sunday there is no class. We'll have the next class on Monday. We will talk about a lot of things on eigenvectors, diagonalization, and then we'll also talk about uh, uh, iterative methods if time permits. Okay, and in the last class, we'll go for, and in Monday's class, if possible, I'll also talk about decompositions, LU, SVDs, okay, single value decompositions, all these things we'll talk. If time do not permit, then we'll see okay i just want to go slowly i don't want to rush uh, that this uh, within this time i should finish linear algebra by skipping or i should not i don't want that we'll go slowly but we'll cover all the topics clear so anyway we'll again 
come back on Monday. So you can see next class is on Monday. Next class on Monday and the date of that is 22nd. okay at 7 pm clear so we'll see again we'll continue the series of course and we will talk about the properties of eigenvectors and other types of matrices as well clear so these things we have okay satvik alex seven stars prakasam ashwini pradhan panchal all of you okay so we'll meet again on monday at 7 pm if you have any questions you can ask me by the way Yeah, you, you can ask me. If you have questions, you can always ask me. No issues. Yeah, okay, Labi, but uh, some of you have questions, I think. So what is semi-positive definite or semi-negative matrix? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll tell you. So basically, semi-positive is something which is like See, for example, if you take a matrix A, okay. If you take a matrix A, people tell you it's called semi-definite, semi-positive, or uh, semi-positive or semi-negative, basically depending on the eigenvalues, actually. Okay. So you can see practically the meaning of positive, definite, definite is you take any vector x. For any vector x, this x dot ax, if you take, this would be always greater than 0. Okay? So x dot ax is always greater than 0 if it is positive definite. And you can see, if you talk in terms of eigenvalues, this tells you x dot lambda x should be positive. This implies lambda is just a scalar, lambda into x dot x should be positive of course and if you see for example the dot product of two vectors that two same vectors this x dot x is always positive always positive so this tells you lambda has to be positive okay so this is positive definite okay so if a matrix is positive definite it always has positive eigenvalues clear if all the eigenvalues of the matrix are positive then that's called positive definite matrix but anyway, that's uh, not there in the within the gate syllabus limits. I have not seen any question anytime. But since you have asked this today, I'm telling this. Okay. So this is positive definite. Semi. The word semi comes up. Semi. If you include equal to sign. That's it. Means some can be zero. Not all are positive. You know, zero is neither positive nor negative. So if zero is coming as one of the eigenvalues, then you cannot strictly say all the positive. Then we would use the word semi. Similarly, for negative, the same story. Negative. That's it. Okay. It depends on the eigenvalues and also this product. Normally, this form is actually from the quadratic form. We'll see what is quadratic form and all because quadratic form is also in the syllabus of data science. So we'll go for quadratic forms on Tuesday's class roughly. Then we'll have much idea on this. Okay. We'll also I'll also tell you derivative of a matrix. Okay. So sometime later down the line, maybe on Monday ending or Tuesday class, we'll also talk about differentiation of a matrix, derivative of a matrix. Okay. clear to all of you fine okay Alex now you're happy that this was taught okay so thank you all we'll meet on Monday at 7 p.m. then okay enjoy your Sunday meanwhile revise the things because I think by this time you have got some 15 to 30 pages 15 to 20 pages notes so please revise these pointers okay yeah, thank you all. Good night.